Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're gonna jump in and take a look by request at how you go through and build a mausoleum or a crypt that can go behind one of your displays. This one happened to go behind my Haunted Mansion display and I didn't do a tutorial on it. I just started it and next thing you know, I was just in the, in the, in the mood and it was just, everything was just flowing. And so I just kind of went with it. I didn't design it other than look at pictures online and try to make it as realistic uh, with those pictures uh, as I could. So first thing, let's talk about what you're going to need as far as equipment. So let's reposition the, uh, the camera and we'll start there. Okay, for this one, this list quite honestly is pretty simple and straightforward. So you're gonna need some scrap, um, XPS foam, whatever you got laying around will work. It doesn't really matter the color because it's all going to be painted in the long run. You're going to need a couple. I've got two. They're the same exact. It's a fine tipped uh, uh, marker. Uh, this is from Artist Loft. Uh, it's a dual tip permanent marker. Something that you can write with real fine. Uh, you're going to need uh, some X-Acto blades. Uh, I've got one here from Fiskars and then just a little cheap one. Either one would work just fine. I've got a rolled up, clumped up uh, ball of tin foil that you're gonna use for texturing. And then for the majority of our cuts today, really only just a couple, we're gonna use the hot wire uh, foam table from Proxon. Uh, and this, this is a necessity for me. It, it helps me to cut uh, really small details and small pieces of, of foam. And, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So before we fire everything up and get started, let's talk about this one real quick. And so this is, these are the pieces that uh, are kind of laid out in front of you. So let me just kind of readjust here. Okay, so if we take a good look at this, uh, I've got one piece of foam on top. That is the whole length there. The front was carved to look like bricks. Now we're not gonna do that on today's because I'm not breaking out all the tools and so on, but you certainly could, and you could do that either with a pencil or you could do it with a hot wire foam cutting tool like we've showed you before. Uh, so that's one piece. There is the whole back piece, the thickness here, which is one piece. Okay, so that's two pieces of foam. You've got the base that it sits on, which is three pieces of foam. You've got the front facade that is cut really thin, which is four pieces of foam. And then you've got a couple little extra details here, which is maybe five or six small little pieces of foam. And that's really it. Everything else is in the details. So it's really pretty simple to do. Um, the, the hard part is lining everything up and making sure that your lines are straight. So uh, that's really it in a nutshell. With that, let's kind of start taking some measurements on this piece of foam that we got laying down here. And uh, we'll reposition the camera and start cutting. Okay, so we've got everything set up here the way we're going to at least start using it. And so the way that I would design this, uh, the way I did design the one that you see back there, again, these are not the same measurements because we're not making the exact same thing, but let's just say we want a, a crypt that is gonna go behind our display and we're gonna make this one six inches long, okay? And that's what we're gonna use. So I just take a ruler and measure six inches here and then I just draw a mark. That's where my first cut is gonna be. And then for a height, this one here is four inches. So we're gonna do another cut. Uh, we'll do the same height on that one. We'll say that's gonna be four inches, okay? So I've got another mark at four inches. So I got a six inch mark and a four inch mark, and that's gonna be my length and width of this particular piece. Uh, then I come down here for the base and I obviously want that. We can have our base do one of two things. We can have our base stick out a little bit on the side, which is always kind of cool looking, or we can have it flush. The way I designed this one was it's flush, but we're going to design this one a little bit different and have it stick out just a little bit. So I'm going to make this one probably, let's go, uh, seven, let's go six and a half inches. 
and it'll stick out uh, a quarter inch on each side. So not much, but uh, so six and a half inches is there. And so that's gonna be that cut. And then we're gonna skinny everything down and we'll go from there. So let's make these cuts real quick and then we'll come back and make uh, some more measurements. Okay, so I got the Proxon uh, in, I've got it turned on, and I'm just gonna take a real quick measurement, uh, and we're gonna start cutting. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this, but it's uh, it's pretty close to being lined up. I'm just gonna hold the, the fence with my hand on this one. Doesn't have to be exact or precise. I mean, you need to get it close, uh, but it doesn't need to be crazy accurate. Okay, so that's the first cut. All right, and then you see my mark there. We're gonna cut here. So we just readjust the gate to about there. And straight on up with that piece there. Okay. And I believe this is our good piece we want. Yep, that's right at six inches long. So that's what we're gonna be using. And then we're gonna make this cut at six and a half. So again, we're going to take a measurement here and just come straight through. And that's gonna get us pretty close with a little bit of overhang on either side. Okay, so now what we want to do and I'm just gonna keep the camera right here. We need to create the facade that is going to be the, the, um, the crypts. This is what we've gotta create now. So in order to do that, you can see the thickness that I cut here. It's about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit smaller than a quarter of an inch. But it's, it's, this will be the depth of what looks to be your crypts inset into this particular piece. And so for me, I didn't really measure anything. I just essentially put the fence up to the, to the uh, it's probably easier. Well, it's, I know it's far away, but you can kind of see what I'm trying to do. I just kind of set it up and, and kind of measured the distance between the, the line coming up, the cutting uh, wire, and what I thought would be a good, um, thickness and that looks to me about right so i'm just going to back this off i'm going to turn it on and we're going to go straight through and cut this piece down okay so this is the piece that we cut off. So this is gonna be our facade that's gonna rest against this. Okay, so now we're really, for now, we are done with foam cutting. I say we're done with foam cutting. I actually also want to cut this back piece down because I want everything to be able to sit on here with an overhang in the front. So I'm gonna cut this down to probably about half Maybe just a little less than half. I didn't measure. Okay, so we can discard one of those pieces. And so now we're left with the facade, the back, and even when they're put together, because they are going to be put together when it's all done, we're sitting with something that looks now about like this. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense so far. Now we need a top cap. And the top cap, I'm just gonna leave uh, the, same, the same distance, right? It's, uh, I'm not gonna cut any different pieces of foam for that. So for the top cap, I just want it to be uh, again, there's no sense in measuring a whole lot of stuff. We're just going to keep it uh, pretty simple. 
we're gonna make it about this wide. And so now our top cap is going to look sort of like this. So we've got all of those pieces so far, right? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to start measuring and drawing out our um, crypts and our the, the way that we're going to cut everything out. I like this side better, so this is the side that I'm going to use, okay? All right, so hopefully that all makes sense. Let me reposition the camera and we'll get started. Okay, so we've got our piece set up here and let's just say we want to do uh, two round crypts uh, at the top. And, and how big is this? We could probably, let's do th uh, three round crypts at the top uh, and uh, three, uh, uh, three square ones underneath that. And that's, that's gonna be our design. So the way that I did this, and again, I, I was careful, you need to have sort of a see-through ruler and uh, you know, kind of create your own, your own measurements. Whatever you decide to do is going to be fine. You just need to kind of keep it in the same, uh, the same way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create, line everything up so it's straight. So I'm gonna do uh, a couple of different, we're gonna do three of these, right? So I can bring it down just a little bit. So, and I'm trying, when, I, when I'm moving this, I'm trying to keep the ruler, and that's why it's good to have see-through. I'm trying to keep everything straight, as straight as I can. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but the closer you can get it to straight, the better it's going to look. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball where I want my first one to be, and so I want that to be one, that to be two, and that to be three. Okay, so just as simple as that. Okay, now the height, if we just kind of line those lines up again, or at least get them on the same portion of the ruler, and maybe make them, I don't know, let's just say about like that. Again, we're not measuring much. And again, we just kind of, draw the lines through the ruler to where we can see the other lines. They, they're going to be okay. Okay, and then we just start lining them up as straight as we can. And that's how we kind of get those on there. Now those are not, uh, you know, those are not, they need to be a little longer and a little less narrow, but you kind of get the idea, right? Just take your time. You can measure them out. You can create a stencil for them or however you want to do that. I didn't do a whole lot of that either. So, okay, so there's that. Now we're going to kind of replicate that up top with some rounded ones. And so we're gonna put a little bit of distance in between these, so something maybe like that. About the same uh, length on these, so we're gonna go. And that's what I'll use to cut out everything. Okay, so that is the drawing part of this. And now it comes to the cutting everything out. Okay, and so you can use um, either X-Acto or if you have a different method of cutting out, that's fine. But this is very simple. 
you just start cutting these out. Okay, so that's everything cut out. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rough some of this stuff up a little bit. And the easiest way to do that is to simply uh, take a corner here, cut and flip, pull it out. Same thing. You can do the same thing on the bottom. Flip. Okay, so now you've got some weathered look in there. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the top. I'll take a couple of uh, chunks out of there. Okay, so that's enough for just enough to where you can kind of see the detail, okay? So that is how we kind of rough all of that up. And then the next thing we need to do is apply the texture. And the texture is what's gonna make this thing, right? And so we're gonna do our writing right here. We don't know that yet, but I know that. <laughs> so we're gonna take our foil, uh, foil ball and just start rolling it around here. Okay, so that's, that's how that's gonna fit together. Just like that, all right? And then this is gonna be glued onto here. Just like that. And then this will be glued onto the top, just like that. And so that's how that crypt will eventually look. Okay, so now that we've got everything cut, uh, we're ready to start gluing it all together. I just use hot glue, it dries rather quickly. And so the way that I do this here is obviously we want this to stick all the way around. Okay, that's how that's looking now. And now we would take it and paint it black. Uh, let me actually go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I've got it painted black. It's not exactly perfect, but it doesn't need to be. It just 
most of it needs to be black. And this is just the water-based uh, spray paint. And so the method that which I found works the best for any kind of a crypt look or a sidewalk or anything like that is a, a mixture of a dark gray first. This is a little heavier of a coat. Then a lighter coat of a lighter gray. Then we're gonna take a almost a peach colored and uh, really kind of get it down to more of a uh, cream color like here. And then we're going to finally take white and highlight certain areas of that. So I'm gonna show you all those steps um, just so you can see the whole thing finished. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our dark gray and this is gonna be a darker coat. So again, you'll just uh, start wherever you'd like and start putting that on. that dry and then we're going to start with the lighter coat at a much much lighter rate as well so i'll be right back when this dries okay so that's dry i've got the brush cleaned out and so we're going to do now just a small drop of the lighter gray and this is a much much lighter coat than uh, our previous coat as a matter of fact that's all the paint that I'm gonna use, and I don't know that I'll use all of that. It's a pretty small piece. Okay, so that's how that's starting to look. And we're gonna let that dry. And then we're gonna put the uh, other peach colored, which is really gonna lighten it up. So it's a really light coat. Okay, I'm back and we're gonna do now a much lighter coat of this almost a cream, cream color. Just a little bit of paint on the brush. Okay, let's let that dry and I'll come right back. Okay, we're gonna put our final highlighting coat on and this is just a little drop of white. We're just gonna highlight certain areas of the mausoleum. And when I say highlight, I'm talking just the, really kind of the corners. And just a very slow, steady hand to kind of get it just a little bit on the top.
Okay, so I think that's detailed enough. And now let's figure out how do we write inside of this. This is a this is pretty the the, the simplest part, but you you have to have a steady hand, and hopefully you've got halfway decent handwriting. It helps. So the way we do that, we're going to let this dry, and we'll come right back. Okay, so I'm back, and I got the fine tip black marker, and essentially you just need to have some sayings of uh, you know I copied the the words right off the haunted mansion. Uh, just looked at pictures on Google to see the uh, the epitaphs or whatever they are on those uh, the crypts, and that's what I put on mine. Or let's just do a, a, an RIP. It's pretty simple, right? So uh, I know this is very difficult to see, and I don't know any other way to do it. Maybe if I go like this, it'll be upside down, but at least, sorry about that, you can see. Maybe. So here I would just... Uh, Okay, so there's the rip, and then maybe some like little lines underneath it or a little diamond in the center of it, colored in, and then some lines out each side. Something like that, right? And then you can go through and just do whatever you want on, the, on any of these. Right, you can just keep keep going, and, and but you kind of see the the thing there, and, you, and I did the same thing there. Obviously, I took my time, I went over it a few times just to make sure that it was what I wanted, and so this one looks a little bit better because I took more time on it. This one, I'm I'm going pretty quick. I haven't really thought about it, uh, but it's the same concept. So you kind of see how that I did that, and then you can also draw cracks. Uh, in your uh, crypt, right? And they actually look pretty good. So if you just kind of maybe however you want to do that, just make sure it's all colored in. You can kind of see in the corner there, you can, you can draw, you know, however you want to do that. And it's pretty believable. Uh, especially from a from a distance and so uh, any way you want to do that is just fine it's pretty pretty easy to do just like that and so you can do a lot of that with a marker just to where it looks uh, just about like that so hopefully this has all made sense to you but this is pretty simple to do just take some time and some patience and this is one of those things you don't want to rush through. Otherwise, uh, you'll, it, it may look like this <laughs> and you can do better than this one for sure. Well, hopefully that made sense and hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, you've got two different types. Now, again, you, you, would, you could decorate this with the fall foliage, the leaves. You can put those in the corner. And that's just tacky glue or Mod Podge, really the satin kind where it's not glossy. Dro uh, drop the leaves in it. You see me do that on the, the fence video in the Haunted Mansion. Same exact concept. If you wanted to put bricks in it, you would carve those with a hot wire tool. You wouldn't texture them like you did the concrete piece uh, just behind it. That's all, all right? Just like that. Uh, but this one doesn't look too awful bad for just, uh, here, we'll put them side by side so you can kind of compare. Paints are pretty close. This one looks a little bit better. Again, I took my time with this one for sure, added some different details, but it's the same concept, right? It's the same concept. This was measured out a lot more, a little more uh, went into that one. But if you can see how this is done, then you can take your time and do the exact same thing. So that's how you make a crypt or, or a mausoleum for your graveyard or your haunted house or what have you. It's pretty simple to do. Uh, and hopefully that gives you the uh, encouragement and the understanding of how to do it. Uh, so like always, if you've liked this video, make sure you click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. The channel continues to grow and it certainly helps, uh, helps the channel to grow to subscribe. It helps me out personally and I appreciate every single one of you for doing so. So until next time, take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you again real soon.